So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you George Padron and his father, Jose Orlando Padron. La familia Padrón les da las gracias a este grupo selecto de fumadores por acompañarnos en esta noche para celebrar el lanzamiento del Padrón 46, que conmemora los 46 años de vida de tabaco Padrón. Ustedes serán los primeros en fumar este tabaco y espero que lo den su opinión sobre el hecho. We're going to have the two-pronged approach here. So he's going to say a, little, a few words in Spanish, and then I'm going to try and translate in English, and hopefully I won't screw it up. The Padron family thanks this select group of smokers who join us tonight to celebrate the launch of the Padron 46, a cigar which marks the 46 years of Padron cigars. You will be the first to have the opportunity to smoke this new cigar, and I hope you will enjoy it and give us your feedback. Estar en Nueva York siempre me trae recuerdos de cuando llegué a este país como exilado en 1961. Trabajé en el aeropuerto, que me, llevando bandejas de comida a los aviones, la cual le permitía a este pobre, hambriento y refugiado cubano acceso a comida como los huevitos. <risa> No, los huevitos de ruso. Caviar, el caviar, vamos a decirle caviar, yo le llamo los huevitos. Sí. Aquí también trabajé durísimo en la lavandería donde trabajaba, utilizaba planchas industriales. Pero les confieso que el frío de ese primer invierno me hizo irme de Nueva York más rápido de lo que Fidel me, me hizo antes de aquí. Being in New York always, bring back, always brings back a lot of memories. I first came to New York as a Cuban exile in 1961 and lived here for several months. I worked at JFK delivering trays of food to the plains. This job had the benefit of providing a hungry and poor Cuban refugee the chance to sneak off for free food. <laughs> I also did back-breaking work here. I worked at a laundry operating industrial-sized iron, irons pressing linens. I confess that first winter drove me out of New York faster than Fidel Castro drove me out of Cuba. Si me hubiera quedado en Nueva viviendo aquí en Nueva York, hubiese aprendido inglés. No necesitaría traductor, pero me mudé a Miami donde todo el mundo habla español. Como ustedes no hablan español y yo no hablo inglés, le he pedido a mi hijo Jorge que siga leyendo inglés el resto de las palabras que escribí para esta noche. If I, if I had stayed living in New York, I would have learned to speak English and wouldn't have, need a translator tonight. <laughs> but I moved to Miami where everybody speaks Spanish. <laughs> you don't speak Spanish and I don't speak English. So I have asked my son George to continue reading in English the words I prepared for tonight. So I went down to Miami where I could feel closer to Cuba. where I could feel closer to Cuba. In Miami, I worked all sorts of jobs. I did anything and everything to make an honest living. I managed to save $600, and with that, opened up Padron Cigars on September 8, 1964. I rented a small space in Little Havana, and almost ran out of money waiting for the government to approve my tobacco license. Finally, I was able to start making cigars and haven't stopped for 46 years. Back then, Cubans felt a profound sadness after leaving our homeland. We missed everything about Cuba. I started making cigars in the Cuban style so that at least Cubans would not have to miss the cigars they smoked in Cuba. When we started the Padron Cigars, we had one cigar roller. I continued to work odd jobs and at night, I would sell the cigars to Cuban markets and to coffee shops. At the beginning, they weren't selling. I would go to the places that I had bought my cigars, and the cigars would, would be practically untouched. I was feeling discouraged. 
Then one day, I took the bundles of cigars from the shops back to my small factory. I told the cigar roller to leave a little curly cue tail at the end, like the Fumas, like the ones we used to smoke in Cuba. After that, the cigars sold very well. That first year, I managed to make 25,550 cigars. I could have never dreamed that I would be standing here tonight celebrating 46 years of our company, which has now made over 145 million cigars. At the same time, I built a brand. I also built a family. I'm very proud of the Padron family, which is now made up of more than 25 children, grandchildren, nieces, and nephews. As a child, I played in my family's tobacco fields and barns. My son George started coming to our factory as a very young boy. It brings me great pleasure to see my children, my children's children, playing and working at our factory. family is not only those that bear the last name Padron, but also all those employees in Miami and Nicaragua who have been with me throughout this journey and helped me bring this company to where it is today. We started with one employee and today have over 400 employees. Each one of them is also my family. I have lived my life by certain rules, which I have passed on to my family. Number one, always be grateful to those who have helped you when you needed it. Number two, be humble. Be a serious, dedicated, and reliable person. And lastly, to be honest with yourself and with others. During all my life, I have tried to respect those rules. Those are the rules by which we have run our company for 46 years. There have been many challenging times. I have had my share of setbacks, wars, fires, bombs, hurricanes, recession. I have never let any of these bring me down or make me lose my focus. I just continue looking ahead, working through the challenges, and making the best cigars I can. In Spanish, there is a saying, those who persevere succeed, and I have persevered. I have also had many good times, recognitions, awards, success, building the loyalty of countless smokers throughout the world. Through it all, I have tried to respect my family name, and I have tried to maintain the integrity of the Padron brand, so that smokers like you know that Padron stands for consistent quality. Building a business and a brand like Padron Cigars has not been easy, and it would not have been possible without the support of our loyal smokers who through, who through word of mouth helped our brand become better known, and also the, the members of the media who have covered the story of our family and our company. There have been many articles throughout the last 46 years in important publications like the New York Times and others but nobody has done as much to champion our industry and find cigars as Marvin Schenken and the team at Cigar Aficionado. Yeah. Marvin, thank you. Yeah. I can't leave tonight without expressing my gratitude for this great country, which opened its doors to me and gave me the opportunity to work and live freely. It is difficult to be exiled from your country and become a refugee in a foreign land. There is no more compassionate and welcoming country than the United States. An artist, an artist feels gratified by applause. For me, what brings me pleasure is to see the puffs of smoke from my cigars floating up in the air. So please light up and blow some smoke. Thank you very much. Algo que quizás muchos no se hayan dado cuenta de esto. Uh, there's something that he'd like to add that maybe some of you haven't, haven't realized. Sé la historia de hace 46 años de lo que era la industria tabacalera en los Estados Unidos. Does he want to give me the microphone? 
<laughs> he, know, he knows the story very well of what the cigar industry was like 46 years ago. Y hace 46 años, los fumadores de tabaco de los Estados Unidos no sabían lo que fumaban. <laughs> 46 years ago, there were many people smoking cigars in the U.S. that had no idea what a great cigar was. La revista Cigar Aficionado es la que le ha hecho abrir los ojos a los fumadores para que aprendan a fumar. No le aprendan, que fumen lo mejor. And with a publication like Cigar Aficionado has done a tremendous job in educating today's consumers in teaching them how to smoke and what great cigars should taste like. Hace 46 años me pedían tabaco verde. Tú fabricas tabaco verde. Mi contesta era: eso no es tabaco, porque una capa verde que la que la quemen. No that 46 years ago when he was struggling to sell cigars there were many consumers that would come and ask him for green wrappers candela wrappers and my father who couldn't sell, who was having a hard time selling cigars would tell him listen i'm not interested in selling green cigars i'm selling cigars that i like to smoke and that's not a cigar <laughs> La, la, es decir, que la gente sepa lo que fuma y, a, y a, aunque los fumadores son buenos pero si no tuviera una, re, una revista que le dijera lo que, lo que es mejor no lo fumaría, fumaría lo más malo and that's why he wants to again thank Marvin, thank Cigar Aficionado for all the work that you've done for the cigar industry I um, didn't have any plans to come up here, but um, since you've made me part of the, uh, the program, I feel a moral obligation to say a few words. Um, I met your son before I met you. He was a rough kid. He had no class. On Under your tutelage, he has matured into a decent guy. <laughs> <laughs> the cigars speak for themselves, but I think all of us in this room know that the cigar industry is a lot better industry today because the two of you are standing here. I love you both. We have no, nothing else to say. I don't know if there's any questions out there. Anybody that wants to ask anything, we'll be happy to answer some. What's the size of the 47? I can't tell you that. If I tell you that, I have to kill you, man. What's the profile of the 46? What's the what? No, tobacco is aged for 10 years. It's, um, I'd say, you know, a full-bodied cigar, you know, along the lines of the cigars that we make, it's probably the most full-bodied cigar. Similar to the 45, but different. The, the, the ring gauge gives it a completely different flavor, so after you taste it, you tell me what you think the profile is. Excellent. All right, thank you very much tonight. Uh, I really, we all sincerely appreciate the fact that you're here. Uh, you know, for us, this is a very special occasion because of the fact that we've worked so hard for so many years to make great cigars and there's people like you here to enjoy them. So thank you. Thank you. Los dictadores no quieren que le digan la verdad. Si alguno de ustedes encuentra un mal tabaco, dígame lo que yo les digo. He says that dictators don't like for them to tell them the truth, but he likes for people to tell them the truth. If there's ever any problems with any of our cigars, please let us know. Thank you.